over the last 30 years? Over the last 30 years? Over the last 30 years. Microeconomics is basically behavior and is basically institutions. And I think that what we have learned is, in a sense, what has succeeded in development, which is rapid economic growth for, for a number of countries and massive poverty reduction in especially East Asia and China, but sufficient to meet the Millennium Development Goals at a world scale. We see poverty remaining extensively in, uh, in India, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Haiti and Central America. So much of the task has been done. There have been huge successes in terms of economic development, but there's a huge task which is left behind to do. Over the last 30 years, we have indeed started to do things differently. Randomized control trials is one which has been quite important, which has been used in many different situations, from health to education, from institutions to governance. But there are also other ways of, in a sense, doing good data work. And this is to use secondary data and this kind of mass big data which are suddenly available to us. Then there are also big changes in, in terms of what we do. Right? And what we do is to a very significant extent, number one, to bring into the reasoning behavior, namely the way people behave is not always what appears to be rational, best to them. There are many things that people should be doing and are not doing, and we need to understand why they are doing what they do in order to design programs and policies which are going to make them behave in a way which is different from what they were doing before. Let me give you examples, vaccinations. Uh, quite often free and underused. Primary school may be free, but is, un is underused. Using bed nets to prevent uh, exposure to malaria. Those bed nets are eventually distributed for free. You give them out, and they're not being used. So there are many things that people should be doing, but they need to be helped into doing what they do for their own best purpose. Well, some of the very big questions that uh, we still see is, number one, property rights over many natural resources are not properly allocated. Land is not properly allocated in terms of who has jurisdiction over the use of the land. And we see that we can still make a lot of progress by being more clear in assigning property rights, helping communities that hold property rights in common to cooperate in managing those resources. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years, it seems to me that there are three major differences in the way we are going to be doing development compared to the way we did it before. Number one, we are into a one world situation where what we do in one part of the world bears on what's happening in other parts. The second is that we have an issue of inequality which is going to be driving the way we look at development in the future. And the last one is the way in which labor, which was internationally mobile until the 1900 and then has been severely restricted to move during the 1900s is suddenly acquiring new possibilities of mobility and we have to deal with migration at a world scale.